Hello everybody, my name is Ziv Ben Zion. I'm a compiler engineer at Mobileye. Um, we develop compilers for Mobileye IQ chip uh, accelerators, which are used in autonomous vehicles. Um, and I will be presenting iterative compilation and how we gave the compiler the power um, to revisit some of its decisions. Um, so a quick motivation here is that um, compiler decisions aren't perfect, right? I'm sure uh, you're all already familiar with it. Okay, there are many steps uh, in the compilation flow and uh, determining whether a specific decision um, at a specific decision point is the optimal one um, is a very challenging task. Um, so I'd like to showcase that using two examples. Okay, uh, first one is with GVN pass. Um, so this pass has an optimization which is called um, loop instructions partial redundancy elimination, um, or simply loop that are used. Um, and what it does is uh, it recognizes that a value is recalculated multiple times um, across uh, multiple consecutive iterations in a loop. And instead of doing so, um, it simply reuses the uh, value that was calculated in the first iteration. So generally, this is a good optimization, um, but it also adds recurrent values. Um, and this may interfere with other passes, such as the loop vectorizer. Okay, sometimes even to the point the loop cannot be vectorized anymore. Um, and on to the loop vectorizer itself. Okay, it also has two uh, main decisions to make, uh, which are choosing the best vectorization factor and the best unroll factor. Okay, and just a, a really tiny example of how uh, this can affect the, the performance of the vectorized loop is that an aggressive VF um, or UF uh, can and probably will eventually lead to a very high register pressure. Uh, so uh, what we would like to do in this case uh, is basically try several options, okay? And this is the process of iterative compilation. Um, it's the process of invoking the compiler multiple times um, using different set of uh, decisions or configurations, um, and then selecting the one which uh, gave the best uh, result. So there are several methods to do so. Um, I'll just name a few. Um, there is manual experimentation, uh, meaning a programmer can manually hint the compiler what to decide uh, using pragmas or flags. Um, this process is obviously a bit slow uh, and requires great knowledge of compiler internals. Uh, so another way is we can automate it using brute forcing. Okay, it will eventually lead to a very long compilation time. Uh, so we can also try applying machine learning techniques. Uh, it should help reduce the number of tested configuration. Um, there are already many existing tools which attempt uh, to do so and does it uh, actually pretty nicely. Um, but my main point here is that all these approaches doesn't uh, utilize the knowledge the compiler already possess. Um, so let's recall the vectorizer example. Okay, we had uh, two factors, VF and UF. And so the vectorizer has a cost model to decide, um, to assign a cost for each set of factors. Um, so it can use this information to decide which are the interesting set of factors uh, it can retry in, um, in iterative compilation process. Um, and that's exactly what, uh, what we've implemented. Um, so uh, I'll do a quick high-level overview of our feature. Um, so we have a configuration manager. Okay, it is in charge of invoking new compiler instances um, and passing them the different configurations um, such that an LLVM pass can read a specific decision from the current configuration um, basically at any given point in time. It can also register a new configuration um, back to the configuration manager. Uh, this allows it actually to uh, revisit some of its decisions. Um, and lastly, it can, um, it actually should uh, send a result of the final generated code uh, to the results manager. Uh, it will assign us a score per configuration. Now I'd like to uh, briefly point out that a configuration in this case, um, it's, it's simply a file, okay? It's a file describing the list of all uh, non-default decisions. Um, so the API is, Pretty straightforward, right? Um, 
a pass can register a new decision. Um, a pass can get uh, a specific decision from the current configuration. Uh, and finally, uh, it can set the result for the current configuration. Um, now I'll do a quick simulation. So the configuration manager is always initialized using a single um, default configuration. And it starts a new compilation using that configuration. And so when the compiler reaches GVN pass, um, it might recognize an opportunity to perform loop data reuse optimization. But as we previously said, um, since it may interfere with later passes, um, it can also register a new configuration which disables this exact optimization. Um, and finally, it sends a result for the, current, uh, for the current compilation. And so the next configuration is now popped. Um, and when the compiler reaches GVN, this time it can get uh, a predefined decision um, which says, do not perform loop data reuse this time. Uh, so when reaching the vectorizer, the loop is still vectorizable um, in this compilation. So using its cost model, uh, the vectorizer selects uh, the best vectorization factor and the null factor. Um, but uh, due to, um, it might get a different set of factors, right, with a very similar cost. Um, so it can register a new configuration with this set of factors. And now onto the register allocator. Um, so at this point, the compiler might see that uh, the register pressure is too high. Um, and so a probable cause for that is that uh, the unroll factor uh, given by the vectorizer was too high. So using a post array hook, the compiler can uh, register a new configuration in which the unroll factor is set to one. Um, and this is a bit different than what we've previously seen, right? Because here the compiler actually changes a decision of a previous pass, right? We are at the register allocator and we're changing the decision of the loop vectorizer. And lastly, uh, the configuration manager is left with uh, two configurations in the pool. Um, these two configurations are completely independent, right? Um, so they can be popped and uh, be executed in parallel um, using multiple calls. Um, so now actually the uh, iterative compilation process is finished. Um, we are left with four configurations and the results. So the nice thing here is that um, we tested only four configurations, um, but these are the four configurations the compiler itself thought are the most interesting ones to try um, for the given model. Um, so a quick summary, um, we can, um, and in our case, uh, we would like to utilize compiler knowledge in iterative compilation, okay, and allow it to uh, navigate the search space of all configuration on its own. Um, it's easy to use, okay, uh, you've seen the API, uh, you can register a decision, uh, you can get a decision from the current configuration and set a result. And uh, as you've probably figured out, um, it's not uh, too complex to implement, okay? It, uh, um, it was pretty straightforward to implement, um, so why not do so? And uh, that's it. Thank you. <laughs>